Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Katie Asko from Dublin, Ireland, and these are your latest headlines from around the world. During his customary Wednesday audience, Pope Francis prayed for all mothers and suffering children as the church prepared to celebrate the Nativity of Mary on Thursday. The Holy Father said, I wish to express my closeness to all mothers, especially to those mothers with suffering children who are ill, marginalized or in prison. The pontiff mentioned Our Lady, who experienced the tenderness of God as a daughter full of grace. He also said that the Blessed Mother shared this tenderness as a mother through her union with the mission of her son. During his address, the Pope reminded the audience not to forget what he called martyred Ukraine and appealed for more prayers for the war-torn nation. The newly created cardinal from the Asian nation of Timor-Leste said that the Pope wishes to visit his home country. In the cardinal's homily during the Thanksgiving Mass for his inauguration, he said that Pope Francis had spoken with him about his intention to visit. I met with Pope Francis on the last day at the Vatican and informed him that the Timorese people are looking forward to his visit to Timor-Leste, said the new Cardinal of Dili. In 1989, thousands of the country's believers attended the Thanksgiving Mass in Tasi Tolu, where Pope St. John Paul II celebrated Mass during his apostolic visit. The Cardinal recalled that at the time of the visit of the Polish Pope, the nation was struggling for independence from Indonesia. In Mozambique, which is battling Islamist insurgency, a Comboni missionary nun was shot dead in the province of Nampala on the night of September 6th. The 84-year-old sister Maria de Coppi, an Italian nun, was killed in an attack on the mission outpost where she was serving. The assailants destroyed the mission station, the church, the hospital and the primary and secondary schools. While trying to save students in the dormitory, the sister was shot in the head. Two other missionaries from Italy managed to escape. Nuns from her congregation are travelling to the spot of the attack to retrieve her body for the funeral. Although the identity of the bandits is unknown, it is understood that they are Islamist militants. Sister de Coppi, who comes from Santa Lucia di Piave in Italy, had been serving in the East African country since 1962. A Catholic lawmaker in Britain who was recently appointed as the new health secretary is facing opposition for her pro-life views and Catholic faith. Newly appointed Prime Minister Liz Truss announced that Trey's Coffey will be the new health secretary. However, criticism arose from some quarters about her Catholic faith. The reason for the opposition was Miss Coffey's vote against making at-home abortion pills available to women in both England and Wales. Miss Coffey, who was previously the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions from 2019 to 2022, has always said that she is a practicing Catholic. Claire Murphy, the chief executive of BPAS, the UK's leading abortion provider, said she has concerns about the appointment of Miss Coffey due to the politician's belief in the right to life for pre-born children. Data released by Spanish pro-life group Red Madre has stated that for the year 2021, out of every 100 women whom they accompanied and who were contemplating abortion, 83 did not go through with the procedure. As per the report for 2021, the organisation supported 58,600 pregnant women across Spain. General Director Amea Azcona said that women who face an unexpected pregnancy usually wish to continue when they are listened to to, accompanied and receive the help they need. To date, the group has served almost one quarter of a million women, more than half of whom have been between the ages of 18 and 29 years old. Compared to previous years, the number of women who received assistance from Red Madre rose significantly in 2021. The general increase in figures has also been reflected in its psychological counselling service requested by 48% of women attending compared to just 8% in the previous year. Believers in the Chinese Diocese of Zhouqi recently celebrated the 90th anniversary of its establishment. During the Thanksgiving Holy Mass, Bishop Joseph Wu Qinqing exhorted believers to support the pastoral activities of the diocese and also to pray for more vocations. He cited the Gospel and said the harvest is plentiful but workers are few. 
During the Holy Mass, you ordained one deacon to the priesthood. He urged the new priest to be the incarnation of Jesus by serving the people of God through daily prayer and sacraments. The diocese was created as an apostolic prefecture in 1932. Today, it counts 67,000 believers, 60 priests and 200 women religious. In the diocese, there are also more than 200 churches and hundreds of places of prayer, including two famous Marian shrines. In the U.S. Archdiocese of Omaha in Nebraska, the implementation of the new policy for Catholic schools regarding gender identity and gender dysphoria could be delayed. The Archdiocese has announced that it would include suggestions from parents and educators in the new policy for the 2023-24 school year. Archbishop George Lucas said in a letter to parents that the revised norms will be more clearly focused and will not compromise the teachings of Jesus Christ and of the Church. He said that the new policy could be released by the end of this year. In the letter, the prelate said that Catholic schools are an extension of the church's mission to bring people to Jesus Christ. An archdiocesan spokesperson said that the new revised policy would continue to stress the church's teachings on gender. The August 25th policy says that all students, parents and school staff have to act towards a person in accordance with his or her biological sex as determined at birth. In the East African nation of Kenya, an organization comprising Christian professionals has thanked political leaders for displaying maturity and calmness in the recently concluded general elections. The Kenya Christian Professionals Forum issued a statement on September 6th in which they urged the new government to uphold the dignity of life and respect the rule of the law. They also expressed appreciation for all candidates, including runners-up. The professionals congratulated leaders for respecting the role of institutions like the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission and the Judiciary. Deputy President William Ruto was declared the winner of the tightly contested election, securing 50.49% of valid votes, while his opponent received 48.85%. Elections in the nation are often violent and bloody affairs, but this year's was markedly more peaceful. In Chile, the auxiliary bishop of Santiago, the most reverend Alberto Lorenzelli, said the outcome of the recent constitutional referendum calls for national reflection. During the recent referendum, 62% of voters said no to the proposed constitution, which contained radical reforms, some of which were directly opposed to church teaching and the sanctity of life. Bishop Lorenzelli said the prelates are happy over the wide participation of people in the referendum and that it reflects the soul of the Chilean people. He added that people want to overcome conflicts and they need a new constitution that responds to the sentiments of all. However, the recent draft constitution contained sweeping reforms such as mandatory reservation for women in all local government portfolios and wider access to abortion. In Canada, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police have said that the second suspect in a mass stabbing case has been found dead. They reported that the body of 32-year-old Miles Sanderson was found in the town of Rosthern, approximately halfway between the cities of Prince Albert and Saxton. Police officers found the deceased with self-inflicted injuries after a three-day manhunt. Police officers responded to a report of a stolen vehicle being driven by a knife-wielding person. Videos show a white SUV driven by the suspect veering off the road as it was chased by police. Mr. Sanderson died two days after his 30-year-old brother's body was found in a field near the scene of a stabbing onslaught that left 10 dead. Charity Aid to the Church in Need has announced that it will respond to the thousands of families affected by the flood in Pakistan. The Catholic Charity has introduced two relief programs following appeals made by the Pakistani Church. As civilians face a severe shortage of drinking water and an outbreak of malaria, the Hyderabad and Karachi dioceses sought urgent relief measures including food, shelter and medicines. Financial aid of at least €200,000 was granted by the charity which will serve more than five thousand families in Hyderabad diocese alone. An additional 30,000 euro will be provided for those affected in Karachi. ACN has also assured mobile health care centres in all relief shelters. Nearly a third of Pakistan is underwater following lingering bouts of record monsoon rain that have killed 1,300 people and washed away homes, businesses, roads and bridges. More than 33 million people have been affected by the catastrophe, which is the worst the country has seen in three decades. 
A Hong Kong court found five former speech therapists guilty of sedition for publishing elements deemed to be anti-governmental in children's books. Judge Kwok at the district court convicted the five members of the General Union of Hong Kong Speech Therapists on Wednesday, September 7th for conspiracy to publish, distribute, display or reproduce seditious publications. The book about a sheep pursued by wolves was deemed anti-governmental by the Hong Kong authorities. After a two-month trial, the judge found the five guilty, stating that their seditious intention was clear. The authors, who are in their mid-twenties, were arrested in July last year. The portrayal of the wolves was interpreted by the authorities as the Hong Kong government, while the sheep was thought to be a pro-democracy protester. Those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow and visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.